let's hop in to our audio source extensions here and let's start to add a, a new little method here that uh, will incorporate uh, the other feature we're going to be talking about which is actions so the play clip by itself doesn't help you out too much saves one line of code but let's say we do something uh, we're going to overload the play clip here something a little more useful and taking the same two parameters to start with and we're going to take in a third parameter here too and this is action so action is an actual type we call it on complete. So first a uh, quick background on actions and what they are is essentially anonymous functions. They would be um, in JavaScript it would just be a, a standard anonymous function. It'd be a lambda in, in other languages like Python and PHP and what it lets you do is you you pass in a, a, a basically an empty method that, that uh, has void as its return type and takes in no parameters and that block of code can be run at any time just by simply doing this. So we'll see the utility of that in just a moment. So let's uh, just copy these two lines up here and get those going. And now we're gonna do, actually, let's not copy these. Let's use them. So we have our audio source dot play clip method. Might as well use it. So what this is going to do now is just call the play clip method. So that'll get the, the audio source start in the play. So what we want that on complete handler to do is we want to wait until the audio file is completely finished playing and then we want to fire it. So having a void return type isn't going to work for this. This is something that we're going to want to use in a coroutine. So let's uh, throw an enumerator in there. That way we can call this in a coroutine. So real simple. We're just going to check to see while this is playing. And while it is, we'll yield return null, which will just wait till the next frame for another check. So once we get to this point, the audio file is done playing. So we're going to go ahead and call that completion handler. So real simple. Let's run through the method just to make sure it's clear. We're going to first start playing the clip. Then we're just going to check every frame while it's playing, just yield return null, just means wait for the next frame. As soon as it's done playing, we're going to call this completion handler. That's what this action is. Okay, so let's add a button in here so that we can actually use this. It's going to look similar at first to our other one we get to the action. Now the actions, uh, the syntax for action uh, looks a little bit odd at first. So I'm going to I'm gonna make this method s spread out across a few lines so that it's uh, it's clear what's happening. So start coroutine. We're just going to spread this thing out. So what we want to do is use our play clip method. And you can see now we have an override. MonoDevelop knows that we added these methods to the audio source class with our extension. So we have our, our two different choices here. So we're going to use the second one. And we'll play the explosion again. And now here's the syntax for, for an action. You're just going to do open and close parentheses, then an arrow. And then again, I'm going to spread this out on, on a couple lines here to make it clear. So this is basically, think of it as a, as a function. It looks just like a function. Here's your parentheses for the function just like this. And then the only difference is you have an arrow here and then you have your curly brackets, just like a function. And I like to spread these out so that I can you know, add a couple lines in here and have it be nice and easy to read. So let's just say audio clip finished. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're just calling a coroutine and the coroutine is that new method we added, new overload, play clip. We're passing an explosion and our completion handler. So what we, uh, what we want to happen is we want this piece of code to not get run until the audio clip is done playing. That, that's our goal here. So let's jump back into Unity. We're going to click the play button and no errors. So 
play explosion with completion. It's the new method we just added. So when we push this, we want to hear the explosion, and when it's done, we want to see that log printed. And there you go. Just like that. Now we uh, we have an extension method that actually is useful. So this is something that uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that would be great if it were built into the audio source class. And because uh, you know, just because it's not doesn't mean that we can't add it ourselves. So that's what we went ahead and did here. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going with this audio source extensions class here, and maybe we'll uh, we'll make a play random clicks method. So this one's going to be public static void because it doesn't need to return anything. Well, play random clip using the keyword this, as we always do, the class name that we're extending here. And this time, instead of taking in an audio clip, we'll take in an array of audio clips. OK, so we just have a quick line of code here to pick a clip. So all this is going to do is use the Unity Engine version of random as opposed to the .NET system.random class. And we want to grab an index that's between 0 and the length, the number of items in clips. And then we'll call audio source dot play clip. And again, that's just calling into this function up here that we already wrote. And we want to pass it in the clip that we just grabbed a random index for. So now this lets us throw a, a random assortment of audio clips at it. And it'll just pick one at random and play it for us. So this is real handy if you want to vary your footsteps or you know vary the explosion sound, basically any sound that you uh, that you want to vary, you can uh, have a nice, quick, easy method here that'll do it for you now. Let's add one more button in here. Okay, and for this one, we're going to use our audio source again, and we have play random clip right here and uh, handily if the autocomplete fills it in for us and we need an array of audio clips to pass this so if we look up here I already have clips in here and it's an array of audio clips so let's pass this in now let's look at the unity editor here and just so you can see where this is coming from here's the clips instance variable and it just has three audio clips in here so Back to our scene. Let's go ahead and uh, click the play random clip button. All right, you get the idea. So it'll randomly play an audio clip for us, just like we'd expect. Quite a handy method to have on the on your audio source there. So let's add one more here. We're running low on time. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated, but very very handy method. I use something very similar to this in, uh, in all my projects here. So this is going to be a fade out. This will allow you to pass in an audio clip and duration and then an oncomplete action. And in this particular case, uh, we're going to make, make it so that oncomplete action isn't required. So we're just going to do a, a quick check on that before we actually do it. So following uh, what we've done before in the past here, First thing we want to do, start playing the audio clip. Can't fade a clip if it's not playing. Okay, so now we're going to grab the starting volume. And we can get that from audio source.volume. Uh, you probably noticed actually, and, uh, or if you haven't, let's uh, bring it to your attention. There is a var keyword now. Now this, um, this is in uh, newer versions of mono and .NET, and you can use var in most cases, uh, as long as the compiler can figure out what type it is. So we, we could have wrote float if we, uh, if we wanted to, but you could also use var. And this uh, you know, looks a lot like, uh, like Unity script or JavaScript when you write it like this. Now, there are cases where you can't use var. For instance, if we were going to do something like this and then assign it later, that won't work. You, the, the compiler doesn't know what type some int is. It has to be able to introspect the type. So if we did this, 
that would be absolutely fine. So var is just uh, you know kind of short. It's uh, it's it's more handy when you're the types you're writing are, are longer names and it's uh, it's easy to tell what they are from uh, from the code that follows. But let's keep going here. So we want to fade this out over time, of course. So just to make note, this is an I enumerator again, so that we can do this over time and do it efficiently. So what we're going to do is in the while loop, we're going to check the audio source that volume. And as long as it's greater than zero, we're going to drop it a little bit. So we'll do a minus equals. And we'll use time.delta time times the starting volume divided by duration. So by doing um, starting volume divided by duration, this uh, this will spread out that decrease of time linearly over duration. Now, this is fine. There's one thing missing here. We need to make sure that we do a yield return null. That way, this gets called every frame for us. And that covers the fading out. So we'll be in that while loop as long as we have volume. As soon as our volume reaches zero, we'll break out of that while loop. So we're done fading out now. And remember, we decided we were going to allow null to be passed in for oncomplete. So we can't just do like we did previously and call on complete because if it's null, that's going to throw an exception. So we'll just do a real quick check, make sure it's not null. And that's it. That's our fade out method right there. Now we'll just throw a quick tester in here so we can uh, give it a listen, make sure it works, make sure there's no errors. Another button. This one's fade audio clip. And uh, again, it's going to be in the coroutine because uh, anytime we're doing something over time with the uh, enumerator, we're going to need that. So I'm going to spread this out over a couple lines again so that we can uh, clearly see what we're doing. So we'll, we'll use the wind audio clip this time, which is a longer one. We'll fade it out over three seconds. And let's start off by passing in null. So that's gonna, this is our completion handler. So we passed in null this time. So our code was written so that it technically should work fine, passing in null. So let's check it out. Hopefully you can hear that. It faded out over three seconds. Now let's go ahead and add a completion handler. And we'll just throw a log in here. And this is the kind of thing with these completion handlers where, where you can get you can uh, chain different sounds together. Like for instance, if you wanted to fade out a sound before playing another one, uh, you can use it if you if you had a method that faded a, a color to black. For instance, this is the kind of thing where where actions would be really handy. Anytime you want to know when something completes or starts, so you could even have uh, maybe uh, this fade out sound could have a, a second parameter that says a, a delay before playing the audio. So then you can pass it in a start action and an end action. I mean, they're, they're extremely flexible. Definitely something that uh, you want to start incorporating in your code if you didn't know about them. So now let's go ahead and check this out. What we expect to happen is three seconds of audio followed by our completion handler getting called. And there it is, all done fading. All right, that wraps it up. This is actions and extensions. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see, let us know and we'll be sure to knock them out.